Uh, just spent the week out in Austin, Texas, hanging out at the Comedy Mothership, uh, Joe Rogan's club. I'm wearing the sweatshirt. What an amazing, amazing comedy club that was. And how much fun did I have over the last week? Got to hang out quite a bit with Joe Rogan. Got to hang out quite a bit with his whole crew of friends and and uh, and uh, staff there at the, at the amazing Comedy Mothership. Uh, Tony Hinchcliffe, of course, from Kill Tony. Red Band, we did the Kill Tony show. We did a three-hour-plus podcast of Joe Rogan where we talked about everything, like literally everything. Like we talked about everything that I've been doing. Talked about my foot injury, talked about moving here to the farm, talked about Fanny the mule, and talked about Charlie, talked about relocating here, living out in the desert in the van, everything, everything. Um, It was a great show. It was really great to get to hang out with uh, Joe again. Got to hang out with him quite a bit at the Comedy Mothership as well. Checked out his new hour plus set that he's working on for his new stand-up special, which is incredible and amazing and uh, was a lot of fun just to be able to kind of sit back and watch uh, him working on his uh, his material. He's a true uh, artist, craftsman of, uh, of the comedy form, right? He's been doing this longer than anybody. Uh, so it was really, uh, really a lot of fun. And Kill Tony, never have been on Kill Tony before, but that was also equally outrageous and uh, fun as well. And I think that was live, but I think that's going to go up and be posted soon. Not exactly sure how that works. I just got off a train. Uh, it's amazing how things work here. You know, how do we get places in the world today? With, with my trusty pup, Charlie, we uh, jumped on a freight train, jumped on a plane. It wasn't a freight train, actually. It was a passenger train. It'd be cool if we took a freight train. That would be really kind of an indication of where things are at in my life. No, things are going pretty good. I'm not hopping trains to get to Joe Rogan in Austin. No, it was a nice passenger train business class, by the way. I'll have you know. They served a delicious gnocchi and a glass of red wine and some cheese. It was quite, quite uh, sophisticated, to be honest with you. And quite reasonable. Not expensive, really, taking the train in business class. Might as well. Might as well fork over an extra few bucks for the gnocchi. Um, but it was really a nice time. And uh, Austin is just, you know, it's, it was neat to escape the cold here. Canada, it's quite cold here now uh, at the farm. Surprisingly, or not surprisingly, so it is still February. So you would think that we should be expecting that it would be cold. But uh, it's been such a mild winter up here in Canada that uh, we're sitting here complaining about it being cold in February. So that's, that's an, interesting, an interesting little detail that uh, I wouldn't normally say it was surprisingly cold in February, but it was nice to get a little reprieve from that. Hang out, hanging out in Austin, uh, went and grabbed lunch with the hilarious comedian Adam Ray and uh, went down to the casino punk rock, I don't want to call it a dive bar because it was it's a great bar on 6th Street in Austin, a legendary bar, but it has some of those attributes of a punk rock kind of dive bar, you know, all sorts of awesome, you know, rock and roll posters on the wall and crazy movies playing on the screen and cool music playing, not playing your sort of typical mainstream music, and the food, of course, being extremely, extremely delicious hamburgers, probably some of the better hamburgers I've had in in my life, possibly. Check out Casino. I liked it so much I got the T-shirt. Um, but, man, it was nice. We had five sold-out shows at the Comedy Mothership. The crowds were amazing. It's really fun the way people come from all over the world to the Comedy Mothership. And so many of the people who were there are people that have been watching 
this YouTube channel. And of course, whenever we go out and do stand up, people come who know the van life trip from last year. They know everything that's going on in the farm. They know about Fanny and Kia and Charlie. And we have all sorts of great interactions. We talk about the good old days or the good old, old, old days from way back. We had Canadians there. We had people from Europe there. We had people from all over the United States of America there, the USA, all over, every state, talking to people from everywhere. Like it's literally at the point where you say, how many people here from out of town, like you sometimes do at a comedy club, anyone here from out of town? And it feels almost like three quarters of the audience cheers. I mean, it's really a real meeting place, a real hub for people who are just uh, love stand-up comedy and are coming out to to enjoy it at uh, Joe's Amazing Club. It really was a lot of fun. I can't wait to go back. It was super cool. I'm getting ready to shoot my stand-up special, which uh, I guess we can kind of announce it, even though it hasn't been announced yet. I'm going to be shooting my stand-up special uh, in actually in an interesting way. I'm going to be shooting my new stand-up special uh, on the tour that I'm going on in April. We're going to pick up all sorts of clips and shots in a very cinematic way of the set that I'm working on now, have been working on for the last couple of years. You guys say, you worked for that a couple of years on that? No, no, it's, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm very happy with where we're at. We're getting a lot of, we're having a lot of fun, right? I got to say though, it's interesting because when you do stand up, there, it is an evolving and, and, and fluid um, story. And it is always changing. And I'm always adding and subtracting things. Comedians are always trying out new ideas, weaving new thoughts and material into the story, into the set. There's a beginning and a middle and an end to it. And when you have been doing this for a long time, I mean, I haven't really shot a stand-up special in a decade. So it's gone through a lot of morphing and changing. And you go, man, you know, I was, I'm re- I, was, I was going through some of my, my material and my notes recently and realizing that I, I mean, there's probably several hours of material that I just haven't been doing. And so I'm kind of starting to think, well, since we're going to put such a great deal of effort into, into filming this special, I'm, I'm going through some of my stuff that's kind of come and gone through the creative editorial machine and I'm trying to figure out maybe at the last minute if I might try to get some of that stuff on tape just so we can have it as an option. We'll, we'll figure it out. I don't know. It's probably not the best way to do it. I'll probably change my mind about that. It's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. You guys have been amazing. Everybody that's been coming out to the shows have been amazing. The shows have been, like I said, it's pandemonium. Um, and um, and the big news is it sounds like we're going to be shooting a really nice, beautiful theater show in my hometown of Ottawa, Canada at the National Arts Centre, a prestigious uh, theater uh, at the National Arts Centre in honor of my hometown of Ottawa and in honor of Canada, a country that I love and have returned to after living for 20 years in Los Angeles, I've returned to Canada and uh, bought the farm. I bought the farm. I came back to Canada for this next chapter of my life, the final chapter, uh, where I will ride my mule off into the sunset. I um, Hopefully it's a long final chapter and a long, beautiful sunset. I'm trying to stay healthy, but I have no intention of ever leaving this place, this this log cabin that was built in 1857. I am the, I am the uh, steward of this place now, hopefully uh, looking after it for generations to come after me. So that's what's going on in my life. I'm here. I'm uh, back in Canada. We're doing this tour in April. It's going to start out in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, then crossing the U.S. border and going to Detroit, Royal Oak, Michigan, 
Mark Ridley's comedy castle. And we're heading over to Cleveland, Lansing, Michigan, Flint, Michigan, Columbus, Ohio, Cincinnati. We're going to Fort Wayne, Indiana, going to uh, Lexington, Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Hanover, Pennsylvania, and uh, Saratoga Springs, New York. A lot of the shows are sold out now, but uh, but check because I think some of the shows might still have tickets available. Um, I forget if it's the one in Hanover I got to push. There's one that I got to got to mention. I forgot which one it was. But anyways, go look at the tour dates. If I'm in your area, come on out. And uh, the 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 show at the National Arts Center hasn't even gone on sale yet. Uh, we're just finalizing all of the details now, but uh, next week it's going to be announced. You heard it first right here. And that's going to be a beautiful night in my hometown. And we're going to film it in uh, a unique way. See how these cameras look. These cameras look nice and, you know, these lights are nice. We're going to be uh, producing this and putting this all together ourselves. Not bringing in some some big fancy crew from uh, New York City. No, no, we're producing this ourselves here. And uh, it's gonna be different. I think it's gonna be great. And the show will air on Amazon Prime and we thank Amazon Prime for everything, uh, all the support this year because we have a new show coming out this year and also a documentary about the history of the Tom Green Show and new stand-up special, all this exciting stuff happen, happening. It's maybe several, several months away. That's why I didn't even really talk about it on Joe Rogan's uh, podcast, but, uh, but hopefully when the show comes out, I can go back maybe and talk about it again. That would be cool. Uh, we will announce it officially at some point soon, but I want you guys to know. And this YouTube channel and this podcast, this is a podcast, by the way. That's what this is. Not sure if you knew what this was. This is the Tom Green Podcast. And um, that's what you're listening to right now. If you're listening on Spotify and Apple Music and um, all the places that you can listen to podcasts, not even sure how many places it is, and also watching and listening to it on YouTube. Or you could turn the sound down and just watch it on YouTube if you want to. That would be something that would be kind of Pointless, really, but you could do that. And I encourage you to do it, actually. Turn the sound down and watch this entire podcast on YouTube. Um, it may even be better. Honestly, it could be a strange way of watching it. Maybe, maybe play Pink Floyd's The Wall while you watch this entire podcast with the volume down. I'm not sure if that would be as interesting as The Wizard of Oz, but you never know. You never know. Maybe it would be as interesting as The Wizard of Oz to watch this particular episode of this podcast with the sound down, with Pink Floyd's The Wall playing. It wouldn't necessarily be the, west, the, the, the best way for me to promote this podcast. The Tom Green podcast, better with the sound down. Like that's not a good tagline because this is uh, essentially a radio show and uh, really sound is really the main thing. So, but it is getting a little bit confusing how that works. This medium is evolving now because here we are on YouTube and there's visuals. And uh, the plan is to bring a lot more visuals into the mix here. Um, I'm going to be uh, adding a lot more cinematic uh, video into this uh, into this podcast. Maybe not for this particular episode because we're just banging it out because I just uh, got off a plane. But um, yeah, there will be more visuals. If you go back to the last episode, you can see visuals, learning about 
Fanny the Mule. It was fun. I was in, I enjoyed being able to talk to Joe about mule behavior because I, I'm the first one to tell you I'm new to this, right? I never, I didn't grow up with horses and mules and donkeys and chickens, but I have had Fanny since June and I go out there and I hang out with her every day and I saddle her up and we go for a ride and some days we have a good ride and some days, you know, she won't turn left. And then I go back to the drawing board and I say, why is she not turning left? And I, and I, and I figure out why. And it's because that she's figured out that uh, I don't know what I'm doing and that she can take advantage of that. Or really what, is that, what, really what it actually is, is she figures out that I don't know what I'm doing and it makes her nervous that maybe I'm leading her into danger. So I have to, again, go back to the drawing board occasionally and course correct and do particular um, things that will make her trust me and make her think that I really know what I'm doing and, and, and want to follow me into the wild blue yonder. But... Um, yeah, the coolest thing though about hanging out at the comedy mothership, I can't say it enough. Like they, they, they there's so many cool things about it, but they've got an incredible, uh, you know, backstage area, green room area, all sorts of incredible comedians. Sometimes will just pop in. Uh, I got to reconnect and chat with Tom Segura for a good amount of time backstage. Just hanging out. I haven't. I did his podcast a few years back. I know he's going to be on tour. He's going to be up here in Canada actually this summer, uh, and that was fun. And you know, I'm like a huge fan of his podcast. I watch it all the time. Now you get to hang out and shoot the shit with the the legend. It's pretty neat, and it's a really cool, chill atmosphere back there. And Ron White the Texas uh, comedian from Texas who's an incredible uh, uh, you know, institution and uh, an incredible legendary figure in the comedy world. I have to shoot the shit with him for a while. Talk about growing up with Texas. And this is just hanging out backstage. Everyone's there having a good time coming out because they, you know, they love the fact that uh, Joe's built this amazing club and he's created this incredible environment for everybody. Super neat. It's an honor to be there. Thank you to everybody that came to the shows. This next few weeks is going to be great. I'm here at the farm hanging out with uh, Fanny and Kia and making sure everyone's good. I'm doing some editing uh, for the documentary that we're working on. Very focused on that and then putting some camera uh stuff together for this tour that we're about to do, which we're about to take off on. And then I'll be returning from that tour. It's just a few weeks. Then when I return from that tour, we'll be gearing up to launch for this big uh, stand-up special that we're going to shoot at the National Arts Center. I believe we're going to shoot that on May 18th. And uh, I would like to say they're not on sale yet, but they're going to be going on sale within the next few days or week. And um, I'd like to invite everybody from the, around the world watching, jump in there, try to get tickets and come up to Canada. And uh, it's going to be a, a big night. We're going to celebrate uh, uh, this big year that we're having here. Big changes in my life, coming home to the country. Um, releasing this special. And I think that this is going to be a night to celebrate with all of you. All the people, all the great people from around the world who have come out to my shows this year too, whether it was in Syracuse, New York, or Buffalo, New York, or Burlington, Vermont, or, or uh, New Jersey at the Stress Factory, or Connecticut, in Bridgeport at the Stress Factory or at Governors in Long Island or at the Littlefield Theater in Brooklyn. I've been a lot of places this year. 
of course, Ottawa at Yuck Yucks, going down to Toronto Yuck Yucks, where I've been putting this set together and and uh, tweaking it and figuring it all out. Peterborough, Kingston, uh, Carlton Place, Petawawa, North Bay. Hitting all the hot spots, man. Hitting all the hot spots. It's great to be back in Ontario, eh? And I'm looking for some. Uh, I'm looking for some fun uh, new shows that we're going to be adding over the summer and the fall. So uh, stay tuned. Just because, just because you go on. Sometimes when you post the video or or the, or the the poster rather that says all the tour dates for 2024. And people say, oh, you're skipping this city, you're skipping that city. you got to understand, it's an incomplete list, right? We're going to continually be adding new shows. So when you look at that list, just because I'm not coming to your city in April doesn't mean that we aren't going to show up there in November or October or September or December. We're adding shows all the time. So what else is going to happen on this podcast? Well, once we kind of get through all of this stuff, which is a, a lot, I'm, we're, you know, we're busy right now putting all this stuff together, just literally building the studio, getting everything set up, getting the cameras set up, getting these shows I told you about finished. Once that's all done, then there's going to be a lot more time to really start focusing on this podcast, which is going to be amazing. And we're going to start having some guests and we're going to start doing some things out in the field. And I'm looking forward. This is just a test, right? This is just a technical test. I'm not trolling. I'm not trolling you guys right now. But I have mentioned before on the podcast that sometimes I'll say it's a test just so that we can kind of fluster and infuriate some people out there who say, what do you mean it's a test? When's it going to start? You've been seeing it's a test for years. And I'm sort of borderline on the fence of whether or not this is a test or not. I mean, maybe it isn't even a test. Maybe this is just the podcast. Maybe this is the podcast. Maybe it's not a test. Maybe nothing is going to evolve from here. Maybe this is going to be what it is for the rest of the duration of this podcast. I don't think so because I have a lot of plans and things that I want to do, but maybe. That's what it's going to be. But I am intending to try to uh, get some great people up here to talk on the show. And so you can understand that um, this may not be it. Right? There may be more to this than just this. And that this may indeed be just a test. Just a technical test. It's nothing worse than having a guest on your podcast and then to have, have the cameras not work. It's happened to me before. It'll happen again. So, um, by the way, speaking of technical issues, the Van Life, the movie part one, which we posted here on this, on this YouTube channel, on my YouTube channel, um, just a couple weeks ago, was sort of a... I went and took all of the exports of my van life videos in their current form, just threw them together on a timeline, did a quick little edit and put it out there. And I've been getting a lot of mixed reviews of my ambient music, which is interesting. And I understand, right? It's not for everybody. Not everybody wakes up every morning and listens to, you know, ambient music. Um, so... Also, there are some color issues, and there's also scenes missing from that. So that's why it's part one. And uh, when, uh, when things slow down a little bit with everything else, I do intend to open up that edit in a way where it's not just me using the previously exported videos, but I'm actually going to go back into the raw footage. I'm going to recut the entire thing, recolor grade, and remix the entire soundtrack. Um, I'll probably use a little bit less music and also lower the volumes a little bit and also probably bring in some acoustic guitar and different styles of music because I want people out there who enjoy uh, exploring the 
Southwest Desert. I want people who are interested in the deserts of the Southwestern United States, I want people who are into that, but also despise and hate ambient music, um, or particularly my ambient music, I want those people to be enjoy, able to enjoy the movie too. So I'm able to put my ego aside and uh, do a remix of the, uh, of the Van Life movie. Um, and also some color correction and also some uh, scenes that are missing. So... I will have that out next year. I know you people really, a lot of you people really did love uh, seeing Charlie and I out in the desert. And plus, I intend to go back. We've got, I've, I've, I've picked up a lot of um, uh, skills, tricks, details, technical uh, tips that I've picked up over the last year or two since I was back in the desert. And uh, I want to go back there with some of this new gear that I have, some of these new ideas that I have, and go back to some of my favorite places and also to some places that I've never been and go back to the desert of the United States. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if any, anybody out there watching would be interested in a, a desert tour in 2025 where... We take uh, the stand-up tour and get the old boho van, uh, the camper van, the solar-powered off-grid bug-out machine and get it back out into the American Southwest and take it on tour and I can dip out into the desert and do some filming with Charlie but then pop into Albuquerque pop into Salt Lake City, Utah, pop into Vegas, pop into Phoenix, pop into Austin, Houston, Dallas, pop into Reno, pop into Denver, pop into Santa Fe, pop into other places in the desert do some stand-up, and then slip back out into the great unknown. I have some people that I've been following on not only Instagram and YouTube, but also TikTok who are uh, quite, quite uh, in the know about some even more secret places. And I want to link up with them and go out and look at some incredible, incredible petroglyphs and some more ruins and some more ghost towns and document it uh, even in a more fantastic way than we have already. So, lots in the works. This is, this is what's going on in my mind, basically. This is what I want to do uh, this year. Uh, we have a potential North American tour being set up as well. This is, this is what excites me. I'm excited about interacting and engaging with all you guys like this. It's, um, it's a real honor and a privilege to have your attention. I mean, if you're still watching right now, thank you for sticking, sticking with me over the years. As long as you guys keep coming and watching, I'll keep broadcasting and I'll keep touring. Okay? As long as there's interest. Because um, it's fun. For me, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying the ride. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody that came to Austin. Big shout out and big thank you to the powerful Joe Rogan. Uh, it's always uh, such a, uh, a, great, a great time coming to do your show. And he's, he's always so generous. He always um, you know, shouts out what I'm doing and has uh, been very supportive of what I'm doing here. And uh, appreciate that. Thank you, Joe. You rock. All right, everybody. Back from Austin. Back on the road again. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon. That's it. That was another episode 
of the Tom Green podcast. But we changed, we, we, we worked on the lighting. You, you might notice that it's brighter. That's something else. It's obviously brighter, right? Again, technical tests, minor tweaks and improvements. Go back and watch the last episode. Was not as bright. Is it better bright? Is it better moody? Moody, bright. Moody, bright. We can get a real debate going in the comments. I feel like it, bright might be better. We'll have to see. Let's see what let's see what the viewers decide. Um, by the way, I'm, I love this comedy mothership sweatshirt that uh, that I'm rocking. Excited about that. It says the comedy mothership on the back of it. Actually, I don't know if you can see it. Says the comedy mothership on the back. Amazing. All right, guys. We'll see you soon. More to come. Till next time. Sassafras. By the way, that's something that you can write in the comments. If you write the word sassafras in the comments, then I know you watched till the end. Shh, don't tell anybody what sassafras means. All right. Thanks, guys. See you later. Charlie, come here, Charlie. Let's go outside.